education or disqualification. Some of us are trying to eat merrily. All right, we ready to bid this? Let's do this. Let's bid this. I can't taste my sandwich. All right, so we're talking about at the retreat a SWOT analysis and what it means and what it is and what it does and all these things that go into it. And it's really kind of, I don't want to say it's a complex topic, but I think it needs more than two minutes of introduction to do. Um, a SWOT analysis is a, it's a, plays a specific role in a larger application. It's like a controller or a typeface. You don't say, hey, look at this beautiful site. You won't believe this typeface I picked out, right? So you're not going to say, look at this SWOT analysis. We're going to be awesome. It's just, <laughs> it's just a part. So let's look at the whole thing. We talked about the vision. We talked about the strategy. Um, and we talked about the SWOT. But we didn't talk about a whole lot about either of them, any of them. Um, the vision is like the guiding light. It's the aspirational thing you want to do. It can be concrete, like we want to win the World Series, or it can be abstract. We want to be the best baseball team ever. Um, and it's kind of the thing that you stick to. It doesn't change very often. Once you've established a vision, you can come up with a strategic plan. And the strategic plan is like the few really high level things that you need to accomplish to reach your vision. So if we want to um, win the World Series, what do we need to do? We need to do X, Y, and Z. Well, that's, there's X, how about Y? We need marketing dollars, we need all these other things. A tactical plan, you build off the strategic plan. And each of those, each of those X, Y, and Z bullet points that you need to fulfill your vision, your tactical plan is how you actually accomplish those. So you need better players, your tactics needs to be, we need to improve recruiting, we need to talk to these people, we need to do this, we need to do that. Along the way, you're looking at things and seeing where you are and what's happening around you. That's an analysis. Um, a SWOT analysis is one analysis, there's quite a few different types. Um, the big thing to take away is that these are components that support each other. So you start at the top of the vision, and that should not really change, I mean, maybe every 10 years or so. Your strategic plan should be a long-term plan. You shouldn't be changing it every year. That's a three to five year plan, typically. A tactical plan can change pretty often. That could be every six months to a year, you're changing your tactics. Still keeping an eye on the vision to where you want to go. I uh, skipped that one. <clears throat> All right. So to help understand this, I think it's good to step out of our, our current environment, our current business, and to take a look at something else, because it's easier to look at, break down the pieces that way. So I made up a little story about Christopher Columbus. Um, Historical fiction. Exactly. So there's this problem. <laughs> so there's this problem. There's some cool things that come out of the East. We got like spices from the Spice Islands. We've got these tapestries. We've got strange animals and plants and foods. And gold. Gold. Here's how we get there from Europe. So the first guy to get there is Marco Polo. He went to China. <laughs> took him a measly three years to get there. Stayed for 17 years, took him three years to get home. I hope he makes a lot of money in those tapestries. <clears throat> so our buddy Chris had a vision. If you notice his vision statement, it's a little bit abstract. It's a little bit concrete, but it's mostly abstract. There's really no details. It's just, I want to do this thing. And that's my vision. In order to make a vision happen, we need a strategy. So we set up our vision. We figure out how to get there. And it, it's the high level plan. There's not many details. It's just, we need to do this. Let's do this. And we need to do that. So Chris's strategy simply is to sail west. Notice we haven't talked about crew. We haven't talked about ships. We haven't talked about money. My strategy is I want to go west. And I'm going to find what I'm looking for if I go that way. Tactics are kind of the last level of planning. And this is how you achieve your strategy. If you achieve your strategy, you achieve your vision. So it all kind of hinges on good tactics and good execution. These are small concrete steps, and they're Pretty, pretty specific. So here's some of uh, Christopher Columbus's tactics. I need money. I hear kings and queens have some. I think I need three ships, so I'm going to need a pretty large crew. 
No one's ever gone where we're going, so I'm, I'm going to need some skilled tradesmen to get there. Oh, and we're leaving Sunday at 3. Be there. <coughs> Analytics are how you know where you are. So we've got tactics, we've got strategy, we've got vision. It's like a big C. How do we know where we actually are in all of this? That's where we have to look up from a business once in a while and actually look at what's going on. We need to look at, at our company, we need to look at our competitors, we need to look at our environment, we need to look at things that maybe don't seem related but actually are. How, how's the banking industry? If we're gonna need capital, we'll be able to borrow it or are they imploding again? Um, analytics, typically, they should be performed more often than not. So we talked about the vision and the strategy and they're pretty concrete, they don't change. Analytics should happen all the time. And I forgot to mention something because I don't have my speaker notes up. A strategy has a strategic plan. A tactic, tactics have a tactical plan. Analytics are something different. So you can tell me what a plan is. Nobody? It's written down. Okay. <coughs> Lots of things are written down. What else? Steps you're gonna take to achieve. Over time, exactly. So a plan is steps we're gonna take to achieve something. I'm gonna start here. I'm going to do this, do this, do this, and by this point in time, I'm going to be here. That's what these are. Strategy has a longer horizon than tactics, but they both are based on time. What's an analysis? Point in time. Point in time. So analysis is where we are right now. So if you have a strategy that goes this far out, you can't do an analysis right here and be done. You do one here, you do one here, you do one here, you do one here, you do one here. <coughs> Here's just some different types of analysis. There's a SWOT analysis we've talked about. Um, there's a cash flow analysis. That's what's our money look like? Are we spending too much? We talked about this a lot here at Gaslight. What's coming in, what's going out, and are we doing what we want to do? There's a risk analysis. Um, what's our equipment like? Is it in good condition? Is our primary money-making machine about to explode? What's going on? Uh, competitive analysis. This is what Samsung does. They look at Apple and say, I'm gonna make that. So the analytics for Christopher Columbus is use whatever method you want. That's not really important. But we need to look at things when we leave port. What kind of shape are we in? Well, our morale is good, our, our accounts are good, our food supply is good. Okay, we've been out, of, been out at sea a few months. How do we look now? Well, morale is still maybe okay. We've been out here a while. People are getting bored. Um, we're eating more than we thought we would, so we need to maybe think about doing something with that. And... We also need to, to take a look around when we land in a strange place called India. Air quotes. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, let's do some swatting. All right, so why do we want to do a SWOT analysis? What does that actually give us? Why is it worth our time? Well, we saw it's a, a pretty simple chart it's easy to understand if you know what it means. It tells us basically where do we get better and what can make things worse. So we've got strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. We talked about all of those and what they mean. We'll go into a little more detail, I think. So we have positive and negative. Things in this column potentially have a good outcome. Things in this column potentially have a bad outcome. This is internal, it's inside the company, it's inside the four walls. This is external, it's our environment, it's our competitors, it's consumers, it's all these other things. So if you look at strength, what is it? It's positive and internal. If you look at threat, what is that? Negative, external. So positive and negative, that's pretty obvious. Good things are good and bad things are bad. Internal and external gets a little more complex. And the difference might not seem to matter. If something's bad, it's bad, right? Why does it matter if it's inside or outside? The reason we care is it, it formulates how we attack the problem. If it's internal, we're gonna take a different approach than if it's external. Internal is inside the building. It's the managers, it's the, it's the staff, it's the processes, 
external is outside the building? Are our competitors going to do something bad for us? Are our customers changing? You know, what's going on? And this is the basic output. It's what you think it would be. Here's our strengths. One, two, three, four. Here's our weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we build up this, this big list of all these things going on around us, and we distill them into the most important ones. Something else that came up is a risk. And a risk is different from a threat. And that's also an important difference. So a threat is a danger. That's something that's going to happen. It's negative. It's external. It's outside of our, our organization. And danger is nigh. So it's either something that's happening right now, or we look out the window and it's like, right there, there's a zombie that's about to attack us. What do we do? <coughs> risk is kind of like that, but kind of not. Risk basically means it's uncertainty. It's something can happen, maybe, but there's no guarantee of it. Maybe we know something's going to happen in five years. It's not really a threat because it's not imminent. Um, it can be internal, it can be external, it can be good or bad. But risk really boils down to uncertainty. And what do you do with uncertainty? You can contingency against it. You can come up with plans. If this should happen, what's our answer? We're not going to do anything, but we're, we're, pre we're prepared. Um, and we can watch it coming down. If it's getting closer and closer, then we need to pay more attention to it. Do risks become threats? They can. If they get close? They can. Okay. That's why we'd have a contingency. So a risk might be... I'm a farmer in California, and there's a drought. Or they're expecting a drought, something like that. I have enough water to get through the year. So that's not a threat. I don't know about next year. That's a risk. I want to I think about that. So we're kind of expanding our analogy, or our analysis, to be a swap plus R. Technically, they're different things, but I only have an hour to talk to you. So we're going to say they're the same. So let's clarify this a little bit. We have a ship called the Titanic, and we have these things called icebergs. When the Titanic's leaving port, what's an iceberg? Threat or a risk? It's 100 yards away, and the captain's not paying attention. All right, so what do we do with this information? I said before we, we need to differentiate between internal and external, and this is why. So if threats are external, we need to go attack them. If there's a zombie outside our door, we don't want them to grab our kids when they go to school. We want to go attack them. Weaknesses are areas inside we can invest in. We can take a long, a long game approach on that and build incrementally, do CI, some stuff like that. Opportunities are, are areas that are good if we have the time and the money. It's a good place to expand the business. It's going to line up well, hopefully, with our strengths, which are tools in the toolbox. So we know our strengths. We don't really want to do anything with them per se. When we look at this threat and we say, OK, here's what's going on. What are we good at? How do we use these tools that we're good at to attack this threat? How do we use these tools we're good at to improve over time? How do we use these tools in our toolbox to go bring in more business? And risk is, is just something we keep an eye on. Anybody want to play a game? <laughs> I like games. I call it swatter. Strength, weakness, opportunity, threat, or risk. Again, let's step outside ourselves and pretend we're the managers of Rheingeist. I think we all know what Rheingeist is. Yeah. So we got a little scenario. We're creating local beers with unique flavors. Swatter. Anybody? Strength. Why? That's what they're good at. Internal or external? Internal. Good or bad? Good. Perfect. Our largest competitors started selling products that are strikingly similar to ours. Threat. 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 Why? Negative. It's external, it's happening now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I'm good. Me too. If we keep spying on Angela Merkel, we're afraid the Germans might stop selling us hops. Risk. It's a risk. <laughs> Why is that a risk? Mm, external, far away. And risk can be internal or external, it can be positive or negative, it's uncertainty. But in this case, it's definitely both of those. So we've had a lack of sufficient processes and controls 
that keep us from wasting beer. Yes. Bye. Negative intern. <laughs> more and more consumers are embracing local craft beers. Anybody but Jeff? <laughs> Jeff, you got it. You're good. Opportunity. Why? It's external. It's our market. It's nothing we're doing. It's stuff happening around us. A drought in the West is pushing ingredient prices through the roof. Why is that a threat? It's happening now. It's happening now. Good. We caught wind that a few angry citizens with pitchforks want to make Hamilton a dry county. Uh, Them's fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Hamilton. For risk. For risk. There's some kind of like legislative So there's a few key things here. So the key thing for me is that there's a few angry citizens. If there's a bill, if there's a bill up to make it happen, it's a risk. So for now, we're going to keep these people happy. We're going to send them some free beer and let them know what they're missing. It's like it may be just that you're drinking bad beer. All right. <laughs> All right. So last point. Um, this is legit stuff. This is what PNG does. It's what Kroger does. It's what Coca-Cola does. If we can understand this and get it down, we'll be in some we'll be in pretty good shape. And also be small and agile and be able to get accomplished. To strength. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Why didn't we do this before the retreat? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were doing this at the retreat. <laughs> James. So um, this is just because I'm on the holiday step and thinking they're, they're trying to do real-time analysis, right? OK. How does business analysis, like, is that something that you could do, like, in some kind of way? Um, the question is, is business analysis something you can do in real time? Yeah. Um, places like Walmart do some a business, analysis, business analysis real time, but it's based on data, right, coming from warehouse, coming from store. Right, so there's different types of analysis. And I think I would need clarification on what type you want to do. So in the, the Walmart case, I don't know what they do analysis-wise. I know they, they have some really sophisticated inventory monitoring systems. Mm -hmm. So for instance, they know when, when you buy a bottle of head and shoulder shampoo, that goes to their warehouse and an order is placed for another bottle of head and shoulder shampoo that goes on, on the next truck to replenish stock. Yeah, that's that's also, process, so that's not really analysis. monitor things like head and shoulders isn't selling well in region but is selling really well in like the California region and then based on that um, rip, rip, I guess uh, make decisions like we need to do analysis why right and it's a trigger point right sure so you could look for maybe a spike in sales things are going up really fast or down really fast yeah. and think about why yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, like, does data lead to the triggering of SWOT analysis? Like, how often you can do it? Numbers never lie, right? Feedback gap. I feel like the analysis is more about figuring out what data we need to gather and then the real time might be seeing. The real time, I, I don't think I would want the real time data to make decisions for me. No, but it could make the decision to do. It could certainly trigger something, yes. Yeah. It, it could certainly send me an email and say, hey, something's not right. Take a look at it. And we'll, we'll see if we want to go into de more detail than that. So, I mean, I, I think I would look at that as like, you know, we bought that giant box of uh, Oreos, right? And if all of a sudden those giant box of Oreos started selling and they knew that they were low on milk, for example, and they also knew, historically speaking, there was a large correlation between sales of Oreos and sales of milk, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I'm still not 100% sure that's SWOT analysis, but... Yeah. I definitely would not consider it to be SWOT analysis. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. 
But yes. the cost of a pen and shoulders didn't there. sell well in California. At Walmart used to lose shelf space. Retail square yeah. brands are all about shelf space. Walmart pulls keys to the shelf space. If you don't sell, there's like 500 people pitching Walmart every day for your spot on the shelf. So, so it's not like a threat to Walmart. It's a threat to head and shoulders. Right. So the specific example Walmart uh, that I heard was like Arkansas um, was not selling this roach spray, mm -hmm. basically, to get rid of roaches. And Walmart saw that it wasn't selling, you know, and it kept dropping off. And so based on that data, they, they went and did some analysis, and it turned out it was because the stigma of having roaches in your house was such a big deal in Arkansas that people weren't buying it because if someone saw you buy it, they would, oh, you have roaches in your house. So what they did is they went to the roach spray people and said, you're going to redo your can and it's not going to have a, a picture of a roach on the cover. Sure. And we're going to rebrand this as home clean, cleaning product or something, right? Sure. And then it's sold more. Right. So that's an entire product category. Yeah. And that would be in Walmart's best interest to take that perspective. Yeah. Because it's not any particular product that's failing to sell. It's an entire category. Yeah. And what Michelle had mentioned, that Walmart is one of their strengths is their supply chain and moving things around. We saw from the chart why that's a strength. So that's how you, that's how you think about this stuff. Anything else? Does that really make sense to everybody? Or are you just not asking. No, no that's, yeah, that's it's, it's great content. It would have been helpful position. before this, yes. but yeah. of course, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. But yeah. Still, that's cool. Maybe we should do it again. Yeah. 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 Dwayne. Alan, whatever time you put into this presentation. Thank you. Absolutely. Are we, uh, are we going to formalize our, I mean, we did our SWOT analysis. I don't know if we just took a picture of it, but is there going to be like a formal, like, are we going to maintain that? Or like, um, analysis or? is not really maintained so much as we've done. And we just internalize it mentally. That these are the possibilities. Right. So the way you do a SWOT analysis is you would just list out everything going on, good or bad. So we started with, is this a strength? Is it a weakness? Is it an opportunity or a threat? We should say, what's going on? Is it good or bad? And then from there, we can decipher if it's internal or external. But to your point, that's the kind of thing that should be done like quarterly or something as opposed to annually at the retreat. Right. Yeah. But we're learning. No, but yeah. There you go. Where's the Oreos? Now we're all eating this. You brought 